Praise God, it's so good to come back and to bring God's word again today. You know, God has just blessed me this whole week of just with just different things he's been showing me and dealing with me on. And, uh, and, and then, of course, this past Sunday, I got so excited when Pastor got up there and, and preached the word. I mean, it, the Holy Spirit was all over him. I mean, you could just see it. And I, I even shared with him today when I got here that, um, you know, God uses us with, and we've got all this up here, we got things, and this is good. We thank God that we got uh, projectors and things we can use. But sometimes God says, I don't want you to use nothing but me. Amen. And he used Pastor so much Sunday morning. He just used joy. Joy just let God do it. And I'm so proud of that, and I got so much out of it. But saying all this to do say this is that what Joy spoke on, God's used me to bring uh, to you today. And what he spoke on, what he said, he looked out there to everybody in them cars. He says, don't be afraid. Don't have fear upon you. Amen. There's so many people now that are Christians that has fear upon you. And I'm going to show you what God's word says. God says, if you got fear, you can't have him. Amen. Boy, that hurts. Amen. If we got fear, we're saying God can't do what he's got to do. But, but before we start, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Lord, I just want to come thanking you. For this wonderful, beautiful day you blessed us with. Thank you, Lord, for giving the, the words, giving me the wisdom. Because I, with, without you, I don't have nothing. And God, don't let nobody hear John Russell. Let everybody hear the Holy Spirit talking through me, Lord. I pray that every heart, every mind, and every ear is open to hear your word. And I pray they take it and do something with it. God, uh, again, hide me behind the cross. And God, we just give you all the praise and the glory for what you're going to do and what you're going to do with this message, Lord, because it's all you, not me. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. The title of my message is, If You Have Fear, You Can't Have Faith. You ever thought about that? If, if, if we got fear upon us, we can't have faith. The Bible says that all we need is enough faith the size of a mustard seed. And we can do a lot, anything we want to do. But listen, even that little mustard seed, if we have fear, we don't have no faith at all. Because God says, if you don't have faith and you're scared of something, you're afraid of what, what's going to happen in this world, then you're telling me that I'm not God. You're telling me that I can't do something about the problems that's out there. You, you're telling me that I died on the cross for nothing. And that's what we're saying when we got fear upon us. What are we afraid of? We're living in a world where Satan is running rapid and Jesus put him down at the very beginning. And, and we, as Christians, we know Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. We know that we can do the same thing Jesus done. And the Bible says we can even do greater things. So why are we allowing Satan to, to stomp on us and do things? Rebuke him. Rebuke him in the name of Jesus and, and believe it and have that faith and that trust that we're supposed to have. But I want to get into scripture, and our scriptures, a lot of it's coming out of Mark 4. And Mark 4, 37, 38 is where we're going to start at. But before I, I, I read this, these verses to you, I want to take you a little bit at the beginning of this verse that I don't have wrote down. And I just want to kind of paraphrase this story. See, Jesus had this multitude of people. And when you think of a multitude, most time when you read about a multitude of people, there's thousands of people. Yes. But he had these multitude of people, and he was teaching them about sowing a seed. About you know you've got the you got the wayside, you got the st uh, stony ground, you got the the good ground, and you even got the ground that, that that got thorns in it. And he was teaching all this thousands of people, and he was doing it all day long. And then even after he got through there, he would go to his disciples and he had to explain to them Amen. what this meant. Yeah. He did. He had to explain to them. So, you know, he was tired. Me and pastors talking uh, earlier today that sometimes we get tired. Yes. Even as pastors doing God's work, we get tired and we need a day off. We need time off. And thank God that, we, that God allows us to have that time and find that time. But Jesus was getting tired. So we go into scripture now. Uh, he, told, uh, he told his disciples, send them away. Send the multitude away. Sometimes we gotta, we got to kind of get away from our church people, Pastor. Yes. I mean, seriously, sometimes we just need to be along with maybe your wife. Yes. Maybe just you. Yes. And we need to, we need to uh, let our church family sometimes know that we just need to be alone sometimes. And we need to just have a time for our, with God for ourselves. 
But he told, he told them to, to dismiss the multitude. And he says, let's go to the other side. And so when he went to the other side, Jesus was, he was tired, Pastor. His human body was tired. Amen. Spiritually he wasn't, but his human body was tired. So he says, let's get on a ship. He, he, he wanted to go rest. So he gets on this ship, and, and, and with this boat, and they go out into the water. And this is what brings me to the, to the verse of Mark 4, 37 and 38. He says, a furious squall came up. In other words, a storm come up, Pastor. It was a storm coming up. And the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern. What was he doing in the stern? I love this. He was sleeping on a, one of the Bible, one of, uh, I think the King James says a pillow. Some of them says uh, a cushion. But he was asleep. And the disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? They had fear upon them. Now let me, let me say this. The very first miracle that I know the disciples ever seen this when Jesus came and got on a boat. He went to Simon Peter, he, or went to Simon. He went to Simon and he says, uh, I'm going to your mother-in-law's house and heal her. And he did. He goes into the house and he heals. Simon seen him heal, that, heal her. And then he goes from there uh, to, out to Simon's boat. And he gets in the boat. And he, he says, let's go out in the water and I want you to cast your nets out. And, and, and Simon told him, says, but we've done this all day and all night, and we're not catching nothing. And, and, and Simon, and he, told, he tells Simon, just do it. And Simon says, I will do it. Because of you, uh, Jesus, I will do it. So he goes out, and he throws his net out in the water. And guess what happens? He can't pull the fish in if so many. And the net broke. And then the other, the other men that was around him with two other little boats, they throw their nets. They've been doing it all day and all night and never catch nothing. And they could not pull theirs in. And this was the first miracle, and Jesus looked at him, and he says, now you become fishers of men. <laughs> Praise God. That's what Jesus, that was his, really, to me, that was the first miracle. We always know, think about the first miracle of Jesus turning uh, uh, water into wine. But he, he literally took them and, and gave the disciples something they seen, and they seen this miracle, so they knew what Jesus could do. And then they go now to the scripture where I'm at right now. And the wind come, the storm come, and Jesus says, I'm, I want to rest, I want to sleep. They wake him. They was more concerned of their self than was anything else. Oh, good word. They was more concerned of their self. So they said, don't you care about us? When this coronavirus comes, God, where are you at? Don't you care about us? When, when finances come that you don't have to be able to pay your house payment in your and your bills and you're saying god don't you care about us or when you when you go to the doctor and you hear bad news and you and you get fear upon you get scared and you say god where are you at don't you care about us god's always there Hallelujah. if you know jesus christ your lord and savior he is always there he is always there listen to me the disciples done seen miracles happen. They done seen what God could do. And yet they had so much fear. They didn't think he could calm this storm and this, all this going on. But in, in Mark 39, Mark 4, 39 and 40, let's see what it says. He says, he got up. Jesus stood up after they woke him. He got up. He rebuked the wind. I want you to look at this now. And said to the waves. He did not, he did not hold his hand out and fire fly out. He did not jump up and say, scream out. He says, he spoke to it. What did God do when he created this world? What did God do when he, he spoke this world into existence? Amen. He spoke it and Jesus spoke you, to the wind and to the waves and quiet, be still. I love it. And then it says, then the wind died down and it was completely calm. It wasn't even air to breathe hardly. Ah. I love it. It wasn't even, uh, you couldn't even see your hair blowing anymore out here on water. And he said it was completely calm. That's what God can do for you. He can completely calm any storm of life that's going right now. Why do you fear? What are we truly afraid of? What are we truly afraid of? Are we telling God he's not God no more? Are we telling Jesus that he died on that cross just for that one time and it's, it's done? Why are we doing this? Why do we have fear? Why are we afraid? And I love, I love this, and I've said it myself, but I hear a lot of people, that's just our human nature. 
Listen to me. I got Jesus Christ living in me. I didn't worry about no human nature. I can do anything that Jesus has done. And I'm so sorry, and I had to ask God to forgive me of my past that comes up sometimes when I was afraid. I have never been fearful of this pandemic that's been going on. I have never. I'm not, I'm not saying this to boast about John. I'm saying this because of Jesus Christ. I've never had that fear upon me. I've never had that fear upon me. He said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Oh, my goodness. When something tragedy happens and we get fear, what's happened to the, the, the belief? Listen, I have seen miracles upon miracles upon miracles in my lifetime. I've seen my own daughter healed from leukemia. I've seen a heart that a guy was in there with this, had, had, had a bad heart, had problems going on. And I literally seen through a screen that this artery was being made to his heart, putting him a new artery. You don't think that wasn't God? That's not the way you think. I've never seen that before, and I watched it. I've seen cancer leave people. I've seen, I went and prayed with uh, other people, with other pastors together, and watched demons literally come out of people. That's our God today. He hasn't changed a bit. He hasn't changed a bit. What are you afraid of? What are you fearful of? And do you still have faith? Do you still have faith? Do you think that? That we lose our faith? Think about that a minute. Do you think that we lose our faith? No. It's what God gives us free will to have. We got to keep our faith. We got to believe in our faith. We got to believe that Jesus, we can do anything Jesus can do. In Mark 4 41, it says, They were terrified and asked each other. Now, look, this just gets me. This just gets me, Pastor. They were afraid of the storm, right? They were fearful of the storm. Jesus stops, he calms the storm, and now after all that happens, they're fearful again. They're terrified. They're scared to death. Who is this? They walk with this man. They seen miracles. They seen him pull fish clear out of the, the, the sea that they couldn't even get out. They seen miracles as he walked along the, the shore. Who is this, they question. Even the wind and the waves obey him? My goodness, I, I just wonder how Jesus felt. After all doing, after completely calming the storms, and here they're over here whispering, who is this? They're terrified, they're scared. Yes. They got fear upon them because who, who, what he does now, who he is. That brings us to another story. There's so many stories in the Bible that God, that God just does miracles. Then Mark 5, 35 through 36. Before I get into that, I want to do a, another little paraphrasing. Right before this all happened, Jesus was walking again with a lot of multitude of people around him. And he was walking, and, and there was this woman that had an issue of blood. Y'all know the story. She was bleeding. She went to the doctor. The doctor couldn't do nothing for her, Pastor. And, you know, if you keep losing a lot of blood, guess what? You're getting ready to die. Eventually, it's, it, it, it's time. And she knew that. But she knew that if she could only fight through this crowd and, and not, not talk to Jesus, but if I could just touch a piece of his garment, if I could just touch his, his cloak, if I could just touch something of him, that I know I'll be healed. Amen. She knew it. You know, but yet, but yet, she had to be obedient by having faith to step out and do something. See, a lot of times we want everything gave to us, and God says, you've got to do something. You've got to show your faith. You've got to show that you're willing to go and do something, and then I will heal you. Then I will give you what you need. But you just can't just want it. You can't just wish it. You've got to have faith. So she goes through this crowd pushing, and she reaches and touches that garment. And immediately, the, the Scripture says, immediately Jesus stops and says, who touched me? Well, the disciples and everybody around thought he was crazy. What do you mean, who touched you? Listen, who touched you? There's thousands of people around you. Everybody's touching you. Amen. He says, no, there's one that touched me, and the power went out of me. Listen to me. We got the same power as Jesus, right? Hallelujah. So when we touch somebody, we believe in healing. Amen. That power, you will feel it, Pastor. Lord, I know the day I was on my knees and crying for my daughter. 
I knew the minute that she was healed because the power of Jesus was in me and I felt it raise me up off the floor like I wasn't even standing on it. And I seen it and I felt that and I knew that moment, that instant, that second that she was healed, just like Jesus said, I felt the power leave me the minute she touched me. My power went out to her and healed her. And she was afraid. She was not, there's this two different fears. There's fear of being just afraid of what's going on in this world. And there's the fear of God. Now you don't fear God to be scared of God. You fear God to get the healing. And she knew that she was trembling. She'd go up and she, he says, who touched me? And she knows she had to tell him. And she went up to him and said it was her. And he told her, he says, only by your faith. But what you did, for you stepping out and believing, you are healed. You are healed. Let me tell you what. There is no fear in the world can stand before Jesus Christ. If you truly step out in faith and touch him. And touch him and believe whatever he shows you to do. And she got healed. And that brings us to this scripture. Mark 5, 35 through 36. It says, while Jesus was still speaking, some people came from the house of Jairus. The synagogue leader. And I, I mean, I couldn't imagine what, to hear these words, your daughter is dead. Your daughter is dead. And they said, why bother the teacher anymore? Why bother? Jesus can't do nothing about this. Why are you bothering him? When we get to the point in our life when there's nothing left and we're on our backs and there's no place else to turn, don't you think you better bother him? Amen. Don't you think you better ask him? Come Don't you on, think man. you better say, Jesus, please help me now. Hallelujah. I have no other place to turn. But why do we have to get to the bottom? Why do we have to wait for then? Let's do it. He says, now I died on that cross. With them stripes, you are healed. All you've got to do is believe and live the way that I've told you to do. Do the things that I've showed you to do. Why are you waiting? Why are we waiting? Why are we doing fear? And Jesus, he rebuked them. He listened and he heard, that's what it says. Overhearing what they said, Jesus told him, don't be afraid, just believe. Don't be afraid, just believe. Now I want to tell you a little bit more about the story that I don't have in scripture here. Jesus was with his, all of his disciples and this multitude of people there too. And he tells Peter, James, and John, he says, I want you three to go with me to their house. He didn't ask the whole 12 to go. You ever think, why, Pastor? I tell you what the Holy Spirit showed me as I was preparing this. You've got to have somebody with you that believes in miracles. You've yeah. got to have somebody that goes with you. Yeah. I'm not going, me and Pastor are not That's going it. to nobody's house and take somebody, even if they're a deacon or an elder or another pastor, that don't have the faith. That's right. Because if you go to somebody's house and you're rebuking Satan off of them, Lord. Satan will eat them people alive. That's it. And he says, you three go with me. He knew their faith. He knew what they believed. He knew that they did not doubt. And they didn't have fear. He knew that. So he, they, they all go to the house. And when they get to the house, he goes to them. People are standing around the house and crying and everything. And he says, why are you crying? She's just asleep. Little 12-year-old damsel. That's what he called her, a little damsel. She's just asleep. They laughed at him. And he says, everybody out of the house. He took the three, he took the three in, Pastor, and mom and daddy went in with him. And he reached down and grabbed that little girl's hand. And he said, little damsel, he says, rise and stand. Can you imagine what they laughed when they come out? Can you imagine how them people that laughed about him before he went in, what they thought when he come out? Listen, my God can do anything today as he did then. Miracles can happen just as much today, if not more, than it did then. I'm telling you, we're living in a miracle where Jesus is getting ready to come back soon. That trumpet is getting ready to sound. I know y'all, I'm never going to quit saying this, Patrick, because one of us, one of us is going to be saying it when it happens. It's going, I don't know which one it'll be, but we're one, it doesn't matter. So it's going to happen. But listen, we're living in a time where miracles is coming, and God says all you got to do is stand on it. Quit having fear upon you. Quit letting fear override what I'm letting you do. We're coming in a time where I'm going to take you out here in the blink of an eye and it's going to be over. My goodness, what a time to be living. What a time to be living. And that brings us to Romans 8, 15 through 16. Thank you. It says, the spirit you received does not make you slaves. Amen. Oh, I love this. So that you live in fear again Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. 
and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Hallelujah. There's no way you can be God's child and have fear upon you. Yes. If you truly ask Jesus Christ in your life and you truly believe that, listen, quit being afraid. Quit having fear upon you. Quit letting the world out there tell you that all this is happening and you've got to stay in the house and stay locked up. Quit having fear. Be obedient to what God tells you to do. Walk out and do what God tells you to do. Amen. Listen to me. If someone, I know we can't go into hospitals because that's their rule. But if they call me today and ask me to go into a hospital and pray for somebody that had the coronavirus, I'm going in the name of Jesus, God, I'm covered with the blood, Amen. and I'll lay hands on that person, and I will pray. And I'll tell you, if you don't believe me, test me, try me. Because I done told God I will do it. So anybody needs prayer, if the hospitals will let me in, I'll go in and pray for them. I will, Pastor. I have that kind of... Uh, Belief that God will take care of me, He will provide for me. I'm not going out there and say, Look what John did. No. I'm going because the Holy Spirit's going to be with me. That's the reason I'm going. That's the reason I'm going to do it. You know, I thought about this that I am preaching not too long ago about we get uh, the inheritance of God. When we ask Jesus Christ in our, as our Lord and Savior, He wants to give us the inheritance. And then we become a child of a king, child of a God. I had a little lady when I was in New Beginnings. Leading the music there. I had a, a little lady there that I, I, I cherished. She's still alive today and I still cherish her today. I don't talk to her as much, but when I left New Beginnings, she would call me two or three times a year and we would talk and, and see each other and just have a good time. But this little lady never sang on my praise team. She never sang in a, in a choir that I ever know of, but she loved singing about God. It's, you know, her voice was a little different than others. But she truly loves singing for God. And she asked me one time, she says, I would love to be able to sing a song called Child of a King. I said, do it Sunday morning. Praise I told her to do it Sunday morning. I'm, I'm telling you, Pastor, listen to me. Listen, this little sweet lady that I cherish and I love, she got up there and put a CD in and had the words in it with her. And she sang. And But when she come to the part, the chorus part, saying she was a child of a king, she would raise her hand and her voice would go stronger when she says, I am a child of a king. I'm going to tell you what, tears went down my face. I've heard that song sung so many times, but this sweet little lady, she sang it from her heart and she meant every word that she said because she truly knew that she was a child of a king. My question to you tonight, are you truly a child of a king? Are you truly a child of a king? If you are, then you should not have fear. You should have Everything that God has gave you, you should stand on, on this ground. Just talking about them seeds earlier about sowing. You, you're on good ground because you're on holy ground. And holy ground is where Jesus is with you. The Holy Spirit never leaves you. He never forsakes you. He is always there with you. And Jesus says, greater things again you can do than I did. Quit having fear, church. I know there's so many church people that don't have fear. I've talked to several while this thing was going on. I'm not afraid. Praise God, that's what I want to hear. Hallelujah. Then I know there's some that, that does have fear. I'm not here to judge you. I'm just here to love you and tell you what the Word says. Amen. If you have fear, you can't have God. Both of them don't work. It's just like water and oil. They don't go together. And fear and, and fear and God don't go together. There's no such thing as God having fear. In 1 John 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love. But perfect love, listen to me, perfect love drives out fear, drives out fear. What's that mean? That means if you truly have somebody that's done you wrong, if you, this means if you truly have somebody that's stole from you, if you've had somebody that's made you mad, if you've had somebody that's hurt you in the past, and you're still dwelling on that, that you cannot love that person then you have fear upon you if some reason that you don't love that person you have fear upon you because it don't go together God says you have to you have to love your neighbor as yourself no matter what your neighbor's done to you I talked about this not too long ago no matter what your neighbor has done to you no matter how bad they've hurt you no matter what it is if you truly don't have fear then you'll love them Amen. you will love them so quit having fear if if something that, that you feel that, that you have fear upon you, check yourself. Maybe you're holding something against somebody. 
Check yourself. Love each and every one. And then it says, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. And as I close in Romans 8, 38, 30 through 39, it says, for I am convinced, listen to this very close, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, nor any power, listen to that, nor any powers, neither height nor death nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing, I don't care what, no coronavirus, no, no demon out there, no anything can separate you from the love of God. If you truly ask Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, check yourself and make sure you're not having fear upon you. Amen. Make sure you check yourself and say, I've got the blood of Jesus. I'm covered by the blood. I'm going out into this world. I'm going to keep preaching the word. I'm going to keep living by the word. I'm going to keep doing what God's called me to do. And Satan himself, no devil, no demon in hell can stop me from doing what God's called me to do. And I'm not going to be afraid of that devil. I'm not going to be afraid of anybody that's out there. I'm going because of Jesus and I'm covered. And that's what we got to do. That's what we got to be. Don't be afraid, church. Don't be fearful, people that's listening. Don't be scared. Always hold your head up high. Put a smile on your face. Thank God. Thank God for the joy that he's given you. And be obedient to do what God's called you to do. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that I'm not afraid. And I thank you that the ones that's listening to this right now, that are examining themselves, that they're turning from that, Lord. I'm not here to judge no person. I'm here to bring the word like you want it brought. So God, bless them. Touch them. Let this word inspire them. Let this word change their life. Let this word reach down in the deepest part of their soul and pull out any fear that's on them. And God, we give you all the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, and God's people again said, Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus.